Hello, Warriors, and welcome back to another Depression Warriors video. I'm Sarah Dawn, and I'm making videos to help those with depression live their fullest and most authentic lives. Today, I'm going to be talking about what the Depression Warriors are. It's a bit about my story and how the Depression Warriors came to be. And that's so you can decide if the Depression Warriors is something that you like and something that can help you along your spiritual and life path. You know, to begin with, I'm not some sort of guru or spiritually evolved person. I'm just somebody who's had, quite honestly, a pretty difficult life. And as a result of that life, I've had depression and I have lived with this deep and intense feeling of self-hatred for a very long time. Before I wrote The Depression Warriors, I had lost everything. I had gone through the experience of leaving my husband, my husband dying. Um, so I lost my husband, I lost my kids, and then I had lost my private practice that I had spent years going to school to be able to do. Um, I just, with everything that happened, I couldn't pay the rent and I couldn't finish with my um, supervision and licensing and I ended up not having an office and, and losing that too. And then, you know, as if all of that wasn't enough, uh, we ended up getting evicted and we lost our place to live. There were a few times there that I completely lost my grip on reality. I was so overwhelmed and consumed by the depression and these intense, deep feelings that it broke me. It broke me down. And it was just more than I could handle. It was more than I could handle on my own. And I literally broke down. But amidst all of that horror and that terror that I lived through, you know, amidst it all, I had the most amazing revelation. And that is that I was not alone. That we are not alone. So it all started with the chapter one in my book that I wrote about that story when an angel had whispered in my ear. And that angel encouraged me to fight instead of back down and just let life take over like I had always done before. And it really became honed in to me the day I bought my first deck of angel tarot cards. You see, everything was so bad at this time in my life. I'm talking bad enough that I had locked myself in a closet and cried for days because I was so broken. And it, like, all I could think about is how horrible I was and how much I hated myself and how worthless I was and how I didn't understand how God would let somebody like me even exist on this planet. All I could think about was whether I even wanted to continue to to live it was all I could do. I think in an attempt for my mind to try to gain some control, I had this thought that I must be cursed. And I tell you, as soon as I had that thought, I ran with it. I remembered before that I had learned a bit about feng shui and energy clearing and cures that you could put out that would help the energy flow. Um, and so I went to the metaphysical bookstore. I went there to buy some feng shui cures because I, I was at this point, you know, desperate that anything could possibly help. Uh, and while I was there, I thought, oh, I used to love tarot cards too. When I was in college, I learned a bit about how to read tarot cards and I was really interested in it. But when I got out of college and I came back home, to my family that was very religious. Even my my grandfather was uh, a minister in the Assembly of God Church. So m my family is very religious. We went to church every Sunday. It was important. So I was scared away from all of that stuff. I was scared away because I was told I was opening myself up to demons and the devil and all this negative stuff and that basically God would hate me if if I used these cards and so it scared me and I left all of that 
that behind. As soon as I had that thought, I must be cursed. Something was already beginning to grow and develop in me. The idea of being cursed just woke something up inside of me. Something that I had been hiding from myself and from the world. You know, like I said, I was I was drawn to these kinds of concepts and the spirituality when I was on my own. But coming back to my family, I was just too worried about what everybody else thought. And I didn't trust myself. I didn't trust my own thoughts. But at this point, it was so bad and so far gone that I no longer wanted to do what I was told. I said no more of that shit. Fuck it all. I'm not doing it anymore. I am going to from now on listen to how I feel. I am going to pay attention to my feelings and if, even if somebody else tells me this is what I should do and this is what I need to do, if I don't feel right about it, I'm not going to do it. Uh, I just had this desire to to trust myself and to go with my gut for the first time in my life because up until that point I'd, I'd always screwed everything up so much I didn't trust myself I didn't think I was good enough to trust myself so I always did what everybody else said especially if I felt to, against it or wrong in some way about it because that must mean that you know that thing that's the thing to do because otherwise I would want to do it if it was wrong I, that's what I would want to do right it wasn't long after that I I learned that that's my intuition and that was probably the best decision that I ever made was to decide to listen to my intuition and I've got a lot of stories about that too so that day when I was at the store I decided to take my time and I picked out the the perfect deck I decided on the right one and I picked out all the, the feng shui stuff and then took it to the counter, paid for it, and I left. And then when I got home, I was so excited to open my cards and then look at all the other stuff I got and read more up on uh, feng shui and the cures and the things I could do to start shifting this energy. It was the first time in such a long time that I had felt a sense of control or any kind of hope that maybe things could be better. So I was pretty excited. Um, but when I reached in the bag, I pulled out this deck of cards and I looked at it and I swear I never bought it. I, I didn't. I, I think I would remembered looking at it at the store at some point, but then I put it back because I wasn't interested in it. I just wanted a regular deck of tarot cards. And this deck, this one right here, was an angel card deck and I didn't want angels I just wanted regular tarot like like what is this why is this weird you know I just want regular tarot cards that's what I had studied before and that's what I learned I, I thought about taking it back you know because I didn't really want it but that, as I looked at it even before I opened it I just I felt this draw to it this uh magnetism you know, like an interest. And I was like, oh, well, you know, I didn't have a lot of money at the time. I couldn't really be afford to buy, you know, how much did this cost at the time? Like $20. I didn't have an extra $20 to just throw away. But I was drawn to it enough that I thought, well, you know, what we'll to just see what it's about. Uh, and it ended up in my bag. I carried it around the store. Somehow I put it on the counter. I bought it at a time when money is a concern, took it all the way home and here it was. So I think I'll just look at it and see what, what it's about. So I opened it and it was so beautiful with these shiny golden gilded edges. And I became overcome by this feeling this, uh, this really strange feeling that I had never had before. Uh, that I had found my family. Like, it, it was like what I imagine like, if you were adopted and thought you were completely alone in the world. And you just, you, you finally met your family and, and met people that loved you and cared about you. Um, that's what I felt looking through this deck of cards. And here they are, just show you shiny 
golden cards. You know, looking through them, I just had this feeling and I, I just I broke down. I broke down into tears, just crying and sobbing. But it wasn't the kind of crying and sobbing that I was used to doing with the depression where I felt so so hopeless and so out of control. I actually was a feeling of like relief and joy. Um, I, I felt like I found somebody who actually loved me. I, I found, I found somebody who loved me. I felt supported and I felt loved and I, not sure I remember ever feeling truly like that ever before in my life, but especially recently around that time with how hard things were. And I, I cried, I sobbed. And after that, things just spiraled. <laughs> I began working with angels. I learned as much as I could about angels. I started meditating. I started relying and trusting on my intuition all the time. Like even when I, my brain and, and my ego, I learned about my ego, you know, told me don't you what you're feeling is completely wrong you're gonna screw everything up i was like no nope, i'm gonna listen to it anyway and i did and it was hard at first to do that but eventually when things started going more smoothly and working out better i realized that was the best choice i ever made and it, it's become a lot easier i learned so much and i discovered so much through all of the spirituality and, and metaphysics with the law of attraction and angels and energy clearing and the feng shui, all of it. Uh, I, I learned so much. And my depression got better. It got significantly better. My life got easier. Things started going so much easier, so much more my way. And it took a lot of pressure off of me. I didn't feel so broken. Like, I felt like I had a grip on reality again, you know? Now, guys, what you got to understand is I was born to be a therapist. <laughs> it was just everything about me just has always wanted to help people. Even, you know, when I was a kid, I mean, maybe that's why. Because I was so depressed as, as a kid growing up. And I just wanted to be able to help others not feel that way because there's nothing worse than being so lost in, in the grips and the pits of depression and feeling like there's no way out and that even if there was a way out you don't deserve to get out anyway you are right where you deserve to be that, that feeling is so intense it's hard to explain and I know that anybody who's not been there wouldn't quite understand it so I imagine most of you that I'm talking to right now, you know what I'm talking about. You know how hard that place is. And that's all I ever wanted to do. Excuse me. It's all I ever wanted to do was help people, you know, feel better and not have to go through that. So when my depression started getting better, when I started feeling better and my whole kind of concept and idea idea of reality began to change I knew what the next phase of my life was about I knew it was about developing a kind of process or program or steps or whatever it is to help others to help others on the same path with depression now I want to help others like learn about angels and you know, these angel tarot cards and that connection that you can get from the spiritual life. I want to teach people about the law of attraction to everyone about this stuff because it's very powerful. But my real passion is to reach those with depression because, like I said, I know how it feels. And that is just, I, I feel my life purpose. It's just what I'm here to do. So I knew that this next phase of my life that my life path from here on out probably was going to be to help those with depression empower themselves to live their authentic lives to face that terrifying shadow and grow out of the depression and into 
the life that they are meant to have. And I know the Depression Warriors isn't for everyone. It is very spiritually based. It teaches you to rely on your intuition and your inner wisdom to trust yourself. It requires learning to trust yourself and to love yourself. But you don't have to do any of it alone. That is where the spiritual journey and the life path and angels and spirit guides and all of that kind of stuff comes in. You are not alone and you are loved so deeply and so unconditionally that your currently depressed mind can't even comprehend. Can't comprehend how much you are loved. It will help you learn to discover that powerful love and that that powerful love exists within you and for you, not just by the spiritual realm, but for yourself. It is in there. You can learn to love yourself and you can learn to care about yourself and to treat yourself with the love and respect that you deserve. Eventually, you learn this without even really trying. It just You just kind of wake up one day and realize that you've let go of that self-hatred, that you've kind of let go of, of the pain that you've held on to for so long and that you feel a freedom to uh, feel like you love and care about yourself. And you don't feel bad saying you love yourself. Part of you that doubts and feels hate and fear and concern and all of that it, it'll keep coming back it doesn't just all of a sudden go away but what happens is this other side of you gets stronger and stronger until it's the more dominant side and this is a side that actually you feel the love you feel hope you feel much more powerful in life you even feel optimism and we know how difficult optimism is for people with depression People with depression very much like to think I'd rather expect the worst to happen because if something good ends up happening, well, that's great. You know, anybody can deal with that. But if you expect something good to happen and then something bad happens, which probably will, let's face it, it's a much, much more of a letdown and much more difficult to deal with that way. You can't put up your shield and defend yourself. But that's one of the first things that we're going to have to knock down that shield and that expectation of negative things because we're going to work the law of attraction and get good things flowing into your life and good energy flowing into your life. And eventually the stronger side of you is going to win out. Things are going to get better. You're going to start feeling better. And one day this depressed part of you, the the negativity of depression and the feeling that you're trapped and can't get out of it, it will all be a memory. It'll just be something that was in the past. At least that's the way it works for a lot of people. Obviously, I can't promise that that works the same for everyone, but that is the goal. So we start with using the law of attraction and neurobiology. It's about kind of shifting your energy and raising your vibrations and bringing positive energy in but at the same time changing the neurons in your brain you know changing those patterns and those expectations that you have so what happens is we end up basically changing your brain so that reality changes for you the way that you see reality changes like in that video on rumination i talked about how you know just because you have a thought doesn't make it true and that you create the life story um, based on memories, but your memories aren't necessarily accurate. Um, that's what this is about, is changing those patterns and those expectations so that you are actually attracting good things into your life and feeling better. And basically, that's exactly what you're doing, is changing reality, changing the reality that you see. But we also are changing the reality of depression itself. See, depression is not the enemy. What I've come to discover with a lot of things, but especially with depression, is that as soon as you start to feel depressed, as soon as you start having these symptoms, you automatically jump 
to the idea that there's something wrong. There's something wrong with you. You're sick. You have this disease. And the only thing you can do is go to the doctor, take a pill, take some medication, go to therapy to fix what's wrong in your head. And you better do it now before it gets even worse and you're a complete lost cause. Having that automatic thought as soon as you feel depressed is not helping your negativity. It's not helping the negative side of depression or you being able to get through it. The thing is, is that you're not sick. There's nothing wrong with you. And there are actually quite a few benefits of going into a depressed state. If depression just didn't take over like it did because of this negativity, you might find that there are actually benefits to being in a depressed state. There's a whole chapter of this in the depression wars, and I, I might talk about it more in another video, so I won't get too into it right now. But it does improve your short-term memory, and it helps uh, with some executive functioning, and it helps you think things through. And a lot of the symptoms that you have while depressed are actually things that are helping you just kind of take a step back from everything and be able being able to gain a new perspective and really think things through, such as rumination. Like the last video we talked about, ruminating on a problem to find a solution. So that is where the tagline, changing the reality of depression comes from, because we're changing the reality of how we see depression and how we experience depression. So in conclusion, the Depression Warriors has been a journey uh, has taken place over several years of my experience with depression and my experiences of what I've learned of working with angels, of working with energy and energy healing and what I have worked with others through when I still had my practice and I was seeing clients and how I've seen it help others too. And I've it's, it's all the pieces put together and so that I could share it with, with you in hopes that you can find the same relief from all of this depression that I did. I want that more than anything for you to experience the relief because I know it's possible. I'm, I'm standing here as, or I'm actually sitting here as living proof that it, it's it's possible it can be done and i just know that the whole reason that you are here as a purpose divine intervention or whatever has brought you here because you are the type of person that is going to benefit from these same things as well we're on the same path and that's why you're here today and that is why I am here and I am so excited to be able to help you. So the Depression Warriors is a spiritual and metaphysical approach that is intended to help those with depression of their fullest and most authentic lives. It's based in psychology and neurobiology and uh, helps change the neural pathways in your brain and change the way that you see reality it works the law of attraction to bring more positive energy and to raise your vibrations but at the same time actually changing those neural patterns in your brain creating new pathways and new expectations so quite literally in every sense of the term the way that you see reality changes that's the whole point is a change it from this one that you have this life story and perception of who you are to this whole other reality where you can actually believe that you are somebody special and somebody important who has a purpose and has a reason for being here. So we've got some shadow work to do. We've got meeting the inner parts of yourself, you know, getting to know your ego. We've talked about that side of Quite a few times in pretty much every video and but also getting to know your inner warrior i mean that's where the name of depression warriors comes from is tapping into your inner warrior and having that part of you fight for what's best for you fight for what makes you happy and not for what everybody else is saying that you need to do or should do but fighting for you 
and what you need because you are important and you do deserve it. And, you know, if you were put on this planet and you decided to come into this life as a spiritual being to accomplish a certain thing or to learn something, well, you should probably be doing it. That's probably, you know, it's going to set you on the path to happiness from my experience and from what I've seen and from what I know that is absolutely true following your path is what brings you joy that's how you know you're on your path because you're happy and it feels good and things are lining up and working out well so we've got law of attraction we got chakras energy work feng shui the spiritual journey all of it wrought with love from angels the spirit guides to your higher self you have a purpose and that the spiritual realm has never left you on your own. Uh, they're standing by ready to shower you with whatever you need to be able to walk your path and live the life that you are meant to have. A path that feels good and brings you joy. I hope you're finding these videos helpful. If you are, Make sure to like and subscribe and leave a comment and share because it really does help me out. And if you are interested in these concepts and want to learn more, check out the description down below. There's a link to the Depression Warriors book and there's going to be more coming out once I get around to finish writing them. Otherwise, I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Bye-bye.